You're listening to English with Monty, the podcast about the English language. If you're an English language learner, have a keen interest in language, or you're a teacher, then this podcast is for you. We give tips and advice and discuss topics about learning and teaching. We hope you find it fun and informative that it gives you help and encouragement in your journey with the English language. Hello there. Welcome to English with Monty. This is our first podcast today. We talk about the ins and outs of the English language, grammar, also speaking to other English teachers and students, and they will tell us about their experiences. Today, I have Gideon, who I used to work with in、uh, Paris, at Let Them Talk, and I'm going to ask him a few interesting questions, or, or in fact, one introductory question. I'm hoping he's on his toes. So, Gideon, welcome to the podcast. Hi. I just, hello there. So, do you have a favourite grammar point? That's my first question. The future is always perfect, John. I do love the future perfect. The future perfect. That's not my perfect tense. My perfect tense would be the present perfect. That's a、But、classic. It is a classic. Definitely a classic. I always use it with the past simple. You just, get a lot of mileage out of that. I usually do. Yeah, I get. Plenty of mileage out of that because it's a very confusing point, I think, for most students. Don't you find that? It is, and、uh, at any level, you can you can always、uh, use it. I find you know intermediate, advanced, you can always come back to the difference between present perfect and past simple. So yes, an oldie but goldie, indeed. And I think your future perfect is not very commonly used. Let's be honest. Well, by next year, I will have been using it for. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> It's future perfect continuous, but、uh, yes. No, I just like to say future perfect because I like my future to be perfect. So that's kind of sort of sticks in my mind. Okay, and it surely will be if you continue to join me in this podcast. Yes, indeed. So, I, what I wanted to ask you first of all is, what motivated you first to become an English teacher, and where did you go? And I also think it would be interesting for the listeners, especially those who are thinking of becoming English teachers. How did you get your first job? Tell us more. Yeah, sure. So, first of all, I guess I was motivated to teaching English. Really, because I wanted to go to Italy, and I loved Italy. Right, I'd never taught before, and there was an opportunity to teach children in kids camps, which was mainly in the north of Italy. So I thought it would be fun. I wasn't really thinking too much about the idea of oh, I'd really love to be an English teacher, but I thought I would really enjoy doing fun kids camps in the summer in lovely Italy with gelato and、uh, pizza and everything, and and I thought that was a great idea, and so. I applied for a company called Acclay, and basically they did. I think it was a three-day training course where you got an introductory、um, TOEFL, would it be, or TOEFL, TOEFL certificate as a teacher.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they sent us off around beautiful parts of Italy. My first experience was near Udine, which is kind of northeast Italy, very lovely area up there. And yeah, that, that's how I got into it. Good. And was the first experience nerve-wracking? It was, but I suppose because we had those three days training, it was a baptism of fire. Let's call it that. So, baptism of fire to explain to the listeners, because that's a difficult one, it is just getting you into things straight away, put you in like, a difficult position, like going into the deep end, jumping going, into the deep end, yeah, and swimming. Jump, you either you swim or you drown. Exactly, and and thankfully I swam. Maybe not very well at first, but at the beginning it, it was tough. It was a challenge, but I I like fooling around, and、um, you know I, I'm a bit of a big kid anyway, so I enjoyed it. So no, it, it wasn't too bad to be honest. Okay. So Gideon, what what inspired you to become an English teacher? I seem to remember you you were in IT to begin with, and and. You told me about some some interesting thing that happened in in one of your first jobs as well. Well, well, actually, IT came later. My first experience before I went into uh, uh, the IT field、uh, was a little bit after I left university. I won't say when it was; it's quite a long time ago. And 
I was doing some very boring jobs in London, just temping, and I was so bored and I, and I wanted to have some new experiences. I had a friend, a good friend, uh, teaching in Turin. I went to visit him and he was teaching English. And that kind of inspired me. I was thinking of going to Italy. But finally, I went to Spain and went to Madrid uh, with no experience and no money at Excellent. all. Good I just uh, had not much knowledge of the English language either. Uh, just <laughs> just got a one-way flight to Madrid. It seems crazy now. I just got a one-way flight <laughs> to Madrid. And, I, and this was even before the internet. And I photocopied some pages from the yellow pages, the Madrid yellow <laughs> pages, the other Paginas Amarillas, and went around to some uh, language schools. And much to my surprise, the, the first one I went to offered me a job. And not because I was so brilliant or so skillful, but I still remember to this day, because it was the strangest interview I ever had, that the director of studies was asking me some questions, but, but, but he didn't ask me what the English language. The first question I said, so what star sign are you? <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, I said, um, I'm, I'm cancer. Oh, God, you're cancer. Oh, great. Oh, cancers do so well here. At, oh, I almost <laughs> mentioned the language school. <laughs> They're so well here. Oh, so okay, great. Come back next week. So I got the first job because I'm uh, I'm a cancer. So, anyway. Wow, that's very interesting, isn't it? I mean, so. Just to ask you, I'm a Sagittarius. Would I have got a job? <laughs> no way. No, I don't think they like right. Sagittarius in there. Uh, okay. <laughs> so it could have taken me two or three interviews and I might have got a job in a decent school rather than the one you ended up in. You might. I think at the time they were desperately short of English teachers. I know my, my uh, colleagues at this language school in Madrid, they knew as little or even less than, than I did. I, I remember <laughs> one time... I was sitting in the, in the sort of what's it called the communal area and a teacher came out of her class of sweating. She ran out of her class and she came up. She said, can I can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? What's an infinitive? <laughs> and uh, that's an English teacher. That was an English teacher who was teaching. <laughs> she has a level of teaching. Oh, poor students now. Oh, dear. Bless them. Now we can understand why, why Spanish people don't always have the best level of English because of the likes of you then really well i think it's imp <laughs> yeah i think it's improved I mean, i've been back i uh, went back to uh, spain recently i noticed uh, i was trying to speak spanish when i go there but when people speak to me in english i noticed that the uh, the level has has improved so so you probably just sowed the seeds right it was you that Possibly. inspired it's the spanish it, it, to get exactly better. exactly because, <laughs> well that, no that's that's interesting i it's a nice story i, I like can, that can i ask you also i ask you a question sure. because uh, another thing that, that there's often forgotten when you're thinking back about uh, these our first experiences but i remember in spain the pay was bad really bad i don't know how it's a function in spain you can you can kind of get by but did you have that how do you survive on well, i didn't maybe you, got, you were well paid at the time but i had a very low low salary and it was very difficult well, what about you well with my experience with kids camps you actually stayed with a family ah. and they used to give you bed and board so so they would give you your meals somewhere to sleep so you would actually get paid very well in a sense because you i think i think we got something like uh, 150 200 euros a week but because you didn't have any expenses during the week it right. actually worked out to be a lot of money you know so okay. it was basically i should have gone to italy i should have <laughs> done the kids camp <laughs> You should have done, yeah. No, it was great though, because you know you you basically had enough money to buy a, a pizza and a gelato every night. So, yeah, needless to say, at the end of the summer, I put on five kilos. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it it was it was a great experience in that sense, and we never really felt that we didn't have enough money. Right. Yeah, they had a, a strange thing that if you took a holiday in the middle of the summer, right. then they wouldn't give you as much money at the end which was a bit annoying but if you kind of worked for the whole summer there was a period of maybe one or two weeks when there wasn't any work at all because all the Italians are, are at the beach but they kind of put you up in in one of their places we ended up staying could either stay in their small apartment in Milan or we stayed in the south in Naples in this rather random village the the director of the south as they as they called him basically put us up and we experienced some yeah rather rather colorful locals let's say that there was definitely a vibe of let's say mafioso in a way but it was fun it was really fun and and the pizza, pizza was a lot cheaper in the south as well so okay. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, that really helped. It was very enjoyable, very good time. Uh, okay, I know to come and get the the financial thing. You're you're lucky. I think in 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 Spain, uh, in order to make anything, you you had to get private private lessons. That's the way you, you got connections, and then you, you got private lessons. That might I don't know if that's the uh, the same now. I'm taught in Spain for a long, for a long time, well, but uh, it might be the same in in many places. And so, so you're in Italy. Where, where else have you? Where else have you taught? So uh, I I know I you taught in Paris because we worked together for a while. But you can tell us yourself some of your experiences if you want. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I I suppose other than Paris with your lovely self, I've I've only really taught in in England actually in in London. So for the past probably about eight or nine years, I've I've been teaching in London as uh, as Monty, the mighty Monty, yeah. and doing conversation clubs a lot of the time, which is a lot of fun. I, I've I've done that probably yeah for the same period of time, seven or eight years. I like it better in London in some senses because you you get the mix of nationalities. Whereas obviously, if you're doing it in Paris, I imagine you, you generally just get French students. Is that right, well, Gideon? Well, yes and no. But Paris is a very uh, a international cosmopolitan city, so you do you get you get mostly French, but quite quite a few uh, uh, for, I say for foreigners as well. Foreigners is that the right term here? <laughs> non non French people. Non non French people. Let's say that. Yes. Yeah. And what do you find, for, say for French speakers, for example, do you find there's a common mistake? Oh yeah. That they, oh that yeah. They all make? the time. All, all the, the time. time. The same. What the you same. mean coming coming to your lessons? That's a common mistake. No. <laughs> Apart from yes, no, but I mean the the the, the French. I guess every nationality has uh, the same mistakes. I, I can't think. Uh, what, what is it? The, the French, uh, you know, like eventually have a, a different meaning and actually has different. Meaning. Lots of false friends. I think, especially with French and English, there are so many false friends. Oh so, yeah, the, the the false friends thing. Is interesting, as well. wasn't it? Yeah. 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 No, I I agree with you on the false friends thing. Yeah, a lot of French speakers I've spoken to have definitely had issues with those kind of things. They often use a word that sounds too good in English. It's kind yeah. of all the high level yeah. words in English often come from French, don't they? Yeah. I guess. Yes. Yeah, yes. Exactly. And and it, most of the time it works. That's an advantage too. Not only disadvantage. It's an advantage, but uh, it can lead to some mix up. And actually, I'm discovering new friends all the time. We'll have to do a podcast just on new friends. I say new friends, false friends. I'm, I'm discovering false friends, faux amis, all the time. Like recently, gadget. I didn't realize that was a false friend because the French say gadget. But it's really? like a really... In English, gadget can be cool. That is a cool gadget. But in, in French, it's like, yeah, it's just a gadget. It has like you know, no use, no functionality. It's just something very negative. So I discovered, always discovering new false friends all the time. So I'm uh, making yeah. mistakes. In yeah, th things like that are interesting though, aren't they? Because I don't know if you, you know, in, in English we have ooh la la is like a some, <laughs> some, something. La plume de baton. <laughs> exactly. But, but that's something very that's kind of almost yeah. seductive and sexy in English language. But actually if you speak yeah. to French people, it's, it's like ooh la la. It's like oh no that's terrible so that, that that's yeah yeah that's that's yeah. an interesting a lot of stuff like that yes mm -hmm. but i don't know why uh, we always the english when they use like french expressions in english they're always different to the french what the how the french use it and vice versa it, almost always when the french use a like an english expression in their language it's just changed in some way so mm -hmm. i don't know if i'm trying to think of an example like you know, we say in English, we say it's, it's this is not, it's not the Wild West thing, like it's you know, a crazy, lawless thing. But in French, they say it changes to Far West, not the, the Far, far West. west. Oh my God. Of, yeah, the yeah. Far. Why the Far West? <laughs> uh, well, well, I don't know. That's how things always get changed between the languages. That, that, yeah, that, that, yeah, that is a very interesting one. I mean, I'd, there were two things that I always used to find interesting in Italy. They, I, th I think they do this in France as well, where they say. They say I'm I'm going footing. A foot, <laughs> yes. Which it, I guess in English that would be jogging, wouldn't it, or running? Well, jogging, I suppose, really, isn't it? And you know, quite often they say, are "Oh they, yes, I'm I'm going footing in are, your English class." And go on. Are they going footing in their baskets? <laughs> <laughs> in their baskets. But like, uh, yes, but in, in in French, the baskets are, are like a uh, uh, trainers. Like oh okay no 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 basketball <laughs> shoes or something no it's putting in my baskets 
<laughs> in Italy, they don't go footing in their baskets. They they do go footing though, and you know it's quite incredible the number of people that don't quite believe that footing is not an English word. I, I find that amazing. It's and not then. A word. It's not a word, is it? No. And then the other thing I find highly amusing, and perhaps this is a bit X-rated, but they on shops, like sexy shops, they say a sexy shop. A sexy shop? Yes. Just, okay. I didn't know a shop that, could be sexy. I think a well, person could be sexy. I didn't know a shop could be. Exactly. That's missed why out. I, that's why I always find it amusing, because it's, you know, I always think as what, if, a, if a... What is a sexy shop? Is that a sex shop? Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, right. exactly. I I always see or, or picture in my mind a shop kind of posing in a sexy way, which which I find very bizarre. But but that's what they call them. That's uh, I do remember I was I was in China and I, by the way I wasn't going anywhere dodgy, but I I did see that the sex shops there they were called the shop of marital harmony. Shops of marital <laughs> harmony, which I guess is quite nice. I'm just going to the shop of marital harmony. If you're back soon, dear. And are you are you supposed to go there with your wife? I mean, I was, yeah, good question. I don't know. Maybe a Chinese listener can can respond to that. Yeah, we're straying a little bit from the points because we are. Uh, yeah, I'd, but what I was going to ask you actually, because we did a YouTube video, which I think you might have mentioned in your introduction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, very first ones. Yeah. Yeah, the very first ones, which which yeah. we really loved doing. It, it was good fun. I'm I'm not really sure if the quality is very good and whether people would really learn too much, but they they were fun to do, mm-hmm. and yeah. I guess that pushed you on to continue with that, right? Yes. Yeah. So so you have your own YouTube channel, and you know, I mean, when you're on it, do you feel kind of like a bit of a star? Because I think you've got a lot of followers, <laughs> haven't you? there 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 are quite a few and uh, no i don't i don't feel like no but I, i'm i should say yes doing the videos with you is what started started off and i carried on and on and very bad and not professional but you you get better by doing and now it's it's great people are, are, are watching the videos and i hope they're learning something i mean that's why i'm doing it and you get a lot of good feedback usually usually good a few haters out there whenever you go to the world you crazy people but mostly good and it's really good to engage with people uh, from all over the world and uh, yeah I really, I really like that i hope we can do the same with the podcast as well and um, we, can, we can reach people we can't on a, on a daily basis just to well, definitely. I mean, I, I feel a little bit intimidated because you are already a bit of a star, and I'm. <laughs> well, thank I'm, you, John. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to... for the call from Hollywood. So, you know, <laughs> any moment now, I'm standing by the phone. If, if we weren't in lockdown, that would have already come. I'm but sure. yeah, yeah. For, for me, I'm I'm kind of trying to follow in your footsteps. I, I guess in some ways, you you are the star of screen and i'm i'm <laughs> i'm hoping some of your stardom rubs off on me you know on on, on this podcast and well uh, can, can i can i say can I say uh, I did the first ever uh, videos with you? I've done like 100, I don't know, 40 videos now, and I've done the first, my first ever podcast with you. And yeah, I feel very comfortable about doing that, working, working with you. And I'm sure we we can do uh, many more together. And uh, yeah, it'd be great. And you can you'll you'll take yours to to a, to a different level as well. Well, great. well, let let's see. Yeah, I mean, I think I've. I've always fancied myself as a bit more of a, a podcaster than, than a okay. TV TV person or, or screen okay. person. Should say. Okay. So, you know, let, let, let's just hope that this isn't one or two rather not very good podcasts. And then I fade into it, into obscurity. And then, then you not go on to your start again, you know, because I'm sure that's not going to happen though. I think I'm destined for stardom on a podcast. So... Uh, I think you are. And do you mind if I ask you another question? I know, I know, I'm, go I'm, ho- I'm hogging things because you. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. So go ahead. this might be an obvious answer, actually, but if there's somebody that you think of in particular, but have, have you ever had a difficult student? Oh God! Oh, a difficult student. Yeah, I think you'd be lying if you said you never had difficult students. <laughs> Or you and you can, and one thing I know from teaching is you can't no matter how good you are and anyone out there thinking of going to teach English let me tell you that I'm sure you're going to be great but you can't please everybody and there are always going to be people who don't like your style who don't like the cut of your jib if you know that expression 
just don't like you for no, no apparent reason. And yeah, I've had I've had people who just have, just haven't got on with. Occasionally, yeah, you get difficult people. Some people are very, very nice, but they never stop talking. That's that can be as a problem. You've got to handle that. You go to people who just don't get it, but it's it's rare. But of course, you, you you've got to you learn through experience of dealing with that situation. Uh, what about you? It has happened. Yeah, I mean, not yeah, not very often. Let's be honest. I mean, I think most people who come to London are, are as I said before, are very motivated. So you don't really get difficult people in the sense that they're not interested in what you're doing. I think most people are very engaged. I have had issues in the past, I suppose, with people. Yeah, either not, you know, kind of not being very pleasant, but it, it's very rare. But I, th- I think a lot of those things are not necessarily about what you've done as an English teacher. I, I think sometimes it, it's just people's, you know, personalities and, and the way, you know, perhaps things are happening in the world around them. I think sometimes people just feel under pressure and, and you know, it comes out in, in a slightly negative way. And I don't think yeah. that they intend to do it. You know, and often you can win people around potentially or help them out with the experience they're having. In London, you do get people who get who get a bit stressed out about finding a job or, you know, kind of surviving because things can be quite expensive. But I think most people take that in their stride as as in yeah. if you take something in your stride, it means that you you're like, yes, I can do this. You know, I, I this is a challenge for me. And I think most people who have already taken the step of moving to London are capable or think they're capable of overcoming the problem. May, maybe not at the moment now. Well, now there's some additional <laughs> stress levels it, indeed Try, trying trying to 25th of them. may 2020 is to be recorded so uh yes we're still there yes we're, we're we're still just about in lockdown so yeah but yeah i'm i'm wondering one thing that i'm interested to know actually i i think london will be quite different after, after this is all over the uh, world will be different <laughs> Well, that, that, that that's very true. But I, I imagine that you're going to get plenty of people in, in Paris that are still going to want to have lessons. But I think I think in London, it's it's going to be at least another six or 12 months before people come over again. Yeah, yeah. I'm hunkering down for um, for online lessons. I'm going to continue. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lessons. tough time if you're for, for, well, not just for, for uh, English teachers, but if you're if you're a freelancer anywhere, it's it's, it's quite a tough time. Yeah. Mm, definitely um, definitely so basically this is our plea so we're, we're begging you t- tell all your friends <laughs> about the podcast because yeah. otherwise we're not going to be able to afford to buy our oh, lock, lockdown piece. Are, we, are we paid for this podcast i wasn't aware of that there is a, <laughs> are you not sponsoring it you're, you're sponsoring it aren't you no? have i got a sponsor i haven't got a sponsor i'm waiting for google to call <laughs> But I thought maybe you'd get somebody like Matt Damon, one of your Hollywood friends, to uh, uh, to sponsor us. Call Matt. I'll see. <laughs> number. Any other questions you have for me? Uh, I did yes. want to ask you. I did want to make before we wrap up. I did did want to ask you. English teaching a good call. And went out there thinking, yeah, should I become an English teacher? Should I become a a lion tamer? <laughs> or, a, or a chartered accountant what should i do weighing up the options you say it's, it's, it's a good it's a good move yes i would yes i think the most interesting thing about being an english teacher is is really meeting people if you're a people person it, i think it's fantastic because okay. especially a not people person a, a what sorry i'm not a people person so no <laughs> get it <I'm> just... <laughs> You shouldn't be doing it then. You should become a a chartered accountant in that case. (laughs) But yeah, if you're a beautiful person and you love helping people, I suppose, as well, is is another thing. I really enjoy helping people. So in, in London, what I enjoy is trying to help people find a job or kind of progress in, in their career. I find that really satisfying. I think that's great. And mm-hmm. the fact that you have lots of different nationalities, you kind of get to know a lot how how nationalities do kind of approach the english language but also as well 
how maybe they approach things in a cultural way because you get some people that maybe lack confidence and that's not just from english it, it's maybe the environment that they've grown up in yeah so i i like to encourage people i like to um you know give them belief in themselves which yeah. which i think is always justified i mean i think most people that come to london i don't know what you find with yeah. with french people speaking english and in, in paris but people are very motivated yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I totally agree with you on, on, on the point you said about uh, confidence, because I, I think, so it's sort of the same in, 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 in France and other, uh, other places, that uh, a lot of what we do is, is not about English teaching. It is about English teaching, but some people, they just lack the confidence and giving that, giving them a little little push and you know taking them in the right direction and then also, you know, helping them with their, their English level. Uh, together yeah that makes a difference and you, you can you can feel feel them speaking with more uh, confidence and at a high level it gives you you know it's it's, it's really uh, uh, pleasing it, it is pleasing is that i just wanted to say that uh, just to remind people before before we finish that john john of uh, monty english yeah you can find out more from do you have a website you want to promote at this moment i do indeed yes montyenglish.co.uk that's my website. What What about you? Do you want to plug yourself as well? Well, you can you can see the lovely videos on Let Them Talk TV on YouTube. We try to have a new video every week or two. We're going to get around to it. You, you could if you're in you Paris, see, <laughs> you can see the star Gideon himself in all his glory. And that, we're going to we're going to try and do these pocket puzzles quite quite regularly. We're going to we're going to tackle things like English today. It's our first one, so I thought we'd just talk about our uh, our English language experiences as, te as teachers. But we're going to focus on grammar and other issues of the English language. I think John's doing his own podcast without me. I'll do a few without him, but we'll we'll work together in the future yeah. too. I'm sure. Well, I think the idea is is that we do a few few together and a few separately. That's okay. that's it, isn't it? Really? Okay. Maybe it's time to sign off. Yeah, let's sign off. So, thanks very much for listening. I hope you haven't found it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay. Stay tuned for more.